Is there evidence to prove mutant DNA pigments? Inquiring minds want to know, where did white skin come from? Last time, we looked at five things that caused skin to turn white. But did you know there's another theory that you may not have heard about? But before we get started, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the little bell next to it so that you can be notified when we upload new material. Also, don't forget to turn on your notifications. Otherwise, you won't be notified even though you have subscribed. You are helping us share these truths and making more people aware of the lies and half-truths we've been told when you share the videos. So last time we talked about these five things that cause skin to turn white. We covered a lot in that video. The video is called, How Did White People Turn White? Be sure to watch it. You will see a little link in the top right corner if you want to go back and watch that one. So one of the things we talked about was migration. We're told that a group of hunter-gatherers migrated out of Africa and moved to areas farther from the equator with lower UV levels and something called natural selection happened which favored lighter skin colors. So through this process of natural selection the favorable traits were then transmitted through the other generations. Now this is the most popular belief that skin turned white in order to adapt to the climate. However, there's just one problem. So the question is why are there certain groups like the Inuit who are still melanated and, and they're resistant to cold? Why didn't they turn white like the Europeans? This article, the question here from Science Line uh, it says, Inuits live in very cold climates. Why do they have dark skin? So, of course, scientists needed to find an answer for that. So, they said that it's because their vitamin D intake isn't dependent upon the sun. So, they're saying they get all they need from their diet of fatty fish that are naturally rich in vitamin D. So then you have to then again ask, well then what happened with those Europeans that migrated to areas near water like the Scandinavians? See, these are questions that's, you know, still very difficult for the scientists to answer. We also talked about albinism being another cause for white skin. There's a theory about albinism that you may not have heard about presented by Dr. Frances Cress Welsing. Please Google her if you have not heard of this woman. She was fearless and brilliant. She's the author of the ISIS papers, the keys to the colors. So in the ISIS papers, she described white people as the descendants of albino mutants. She wrote that due to this defective mutation, a group of albinos may have been forcibly expelled from Africa. Now, if you think about it, this could explain why scientists say that all humanity began in Africa, but a group of ancient hunter-gatherers migrated into colder climates. So listen as she shares uh, information about this in a debate with Dr. Shockley. She completely decimated this man in that debate. In 1969, I wrote a paper called The Crest Theory of Color Confrontation and Racism. And the sole reason behind writing that paper was an attempt to 
understand the behavior of white people in relationship to all people of color, every place in the world, black, brown, red, and yellow people. And the paper was presented to the Americans at the National Medical Association, the section on psychiatry in neurology, because back in 1969, uh, the black caucus in the American Psychiatric Association, we had said that racism, and when we talk about racism, we're talking about the white supremacy behavior of white people that racism was the number one mental health problem in the nation and it was the number one cause of other mental health problems. And I wanted to understand what this thing of racism really is all about because it's the kind of, it is the thing that has caused woe and misery and suffering for the vast majority of the people on this planet that are classified as non-white. And in my attempt to understand why the necessity of white people to keep saying that white is superior and that the condition of non-white is inferior. And the more I thought about it, in conjunction with uh, an idea that a friend of mine had that racism was a worldwide behavioral system for the maintenance of white supremacy by a small minority of people. I put those ideas together with what we know about genetics, what we know about the condition of skin whiteness itself. The condition of skin whiteness is the genetic inability to produce skin pigment called melanin. This is a genetic recessive trait. It is a genetic deficiency state, not as defined by Francis Welsing, but defined by geneticists and dermatologists that the inability to produce the skin pigment of melanin or melanin pigment is described as albinism. And I think that white people even though most white people are not consciously understanding their problem in genetics. They are certainly aware that they are genetically dominated by people of color. That's why it was a statement, one, block, one drop of black blood makes you black, because people of color have the genetic capacity to annihilate white people. And so unless white people control the reproductivity of people of color, then we have, we can postulate that perhaps one day there won't be any white people. And I think that the very survival of white people necessitates that they project genetic inferiority on people of color because it is they who really are aware that they are genetic recessive and perhaps genetically inferior to people of color. And I am not saying this to to call uh, the condition of skin whiteness to say, well, no, white people are inferior. I'm not saying it for that purpose, but I think that it is of prime importance for the majority of people in the world to understand why it is that white people have to, the effective majority, large numbers of white people, have to move in a hostile and an aggressive way against people of color and have to constantly focus on, it's you who's genetically inferior because they realize that there's something wrong with their genetic status. As she said, she had done the research to back up her theory that white skin was a genetic mutation. Here's a report from Science Direct confirming the stigma attached with albinism. And even today, those affected by it are fearing for their lives in some parts of Africa. They're being murdered for their body parts. So let's read some excerpts from this. It says the occurrence of albinism is associated with difficulties and disadvantages resulting from the genetic disorder and social segregation. There is stigma related to the disease that affects albinos and their families. I'm going to drop down. It says that Genetically, albinism is classified according to the type of genetic mutation present. So again, this is confirming what she's saying. Um, and we see that there's social exclusion happening even today. So yes, back then, this may have caused some of them to band together and leave. So next you'll hear Dr. John Hawks share additional information about OCA, the gene that regulates pigmentation that causes albinism. Uh, this is my daughter. She's uh, pretty blue eyes. 
Blue eyes are caused by a change in the regulation of a gene called OCA2. OCA2, oculocutaneous albinism type 2. Uh, it is a known gene because it makes some people in sub-Saharan Africa and in the southwest United States albino. Uh, but it's not a disease that makes you sick. It's a disease that regulates pigmentation. And there are a number of genes that are part of the pathway to do this. OCA2, the regular more regulatory mutation that looks like it makes blue eyes, we estimate to be about 10,000 years old. I really encourage you to get a copy of the ISIS papers. Also, in her own words, you will hear her say that the original Semites were melanated people with kinky hair. I'd like to say that I don't think that there's a major difference between what Dr. Shockley is doing. I don't think that Dr. Shockley is fully aware of what he is doing and why he is doing what he's doing. But the long-range implications of what he is doing are no different than the propaganda campaign that Hitler and his Nazi unit carried on in Germany that ended up eliminating uh, six million Jewish people. Now, what is most interesting is that Hitler said the very same thing he said number one that the Jews were genetically inferior to the Aryans number two he was aware that the Semites had genetically dominant material uh, genetic material to the Aryans and if we begin to understand the way that people who were in Europe at the time that the Semites arrived from Africa when the Semites arrived in Europe from Africa, they were people who had substantial amounts of color and who had very kinky hair because they were from the continent of Africa. And the Europeans, the white people who were there, had a reaction, a color reaction, to the Semites that is no different than the reaction and the concern on the part of people who are white in this area of the world or any other area of the world to people who are who have the genetic capacity to produce color who can genetically annihilate their position and i think it's very very important even though dr shockley i am convinced that dr shockley believes that he is uh, perhaps elevating science with all of his charts and all of his figures but he doesn't understand the things that propel him as a white individual in a social system that has programmed him throughout his life and programmed large numbers of people like him to focus on the genetics of people of color in such a way as to destroy people of color. As you will see, there are others who know that the original Semites were people of color because the question is being asked in this op-ed written in the Atlanta Jewish Times on October 8th, 2020, are Jews white? It says, speaking at Emory University a couple of years ago, playwright Alfred Urey recalled that when he was growing up in Atlanta in the 1940s, he was told, we're not white, we're Jewish. At some point, Jews apparently became white. If you all can get a copy of this, please read this. There was a lot of backlash about this. So much so that it caused a lot of the Jewish forums to just close down and cause some of those who call themselves black Jews to quit in protest. So when you read this, you'll find that Jews were not initially white, but something happen to change that. Let's read some more of this. All right, so I'm reading some more of this. It says, beyond Judaism as a religion, are Jews a race, an ethnicity, a nation, a culture, or all of these? And the person responding, Seagal Samuel says, we all maintain multiple identities. I am, in no particular order, or depending on the circumstances, a husband and father, a son, a brother, and an uncle, a journalist, and a soccer fan, as well as an American by nationality, a Jew by religion, and white by pigmentation. My European forebears make me Ashkenazi. So according to the Pew Research Center, 
This is in 2013, a study of American Jews, 94% described themselves as non-Hispanic whites, while 3% were Hispanic, 2% were black, and 2% were from other racial and ethnic backgrounds. So the question is, are Jews white? That's the question. It says it means something different for those descended from the Mizrahi, which is the Jews of the Middle East, and the Sephardim from the Iberian Peninsula, as well as African American, Asian American, and Latino Jews. Huh. Are you seeing this? African American Jews? The fact that African Americans are even listed <laughs> makes you want to scratch your head. Of course, we know that all of the original descendants of Jacob were black or so-called black people, people with melanated skin. And we also know for a fact that the Bible did not make a mistake when it identified Ashkenaz as a descendant of Japheth and the table of nations. This can be found in Genesis 10. So this gentleman is obviously a convert. Let's read a little more. So listen closely to these words that Micah Danzig wrote in a column in the foreword. He said, Jews are not white. He said, we are a tribal people from the Levant. So basically he's saying, this is just a semantic issue. He said, many of our people were forcibly exiled out of and into other nations, including in Europe, where we were taken in chains and often subjected to brutal and oppressive institutional racism based on our ethnicity, tribal affiliation, culture, and faith. <laughs> Folks, this is hypocritical and it's racial duplicity, plain and simple. Supposedly, some of the Jews remain black while some turn white. Those who turn white had the chance to experience white privilege and take advantage of white supremacy. So Mr. Danzig is twisting history to fit a certain narrative. I want to see proof of Ashkenazis being taken in chains and brutalized like their supposed black brethren were. His statements are disingenuous and it's an affront to African Americans. Let's go on. It says, if Jews are not white, then what about the concept of white privilege, which asserts that skin color has bequeathed you privilege and protection regardless of your family history or how you self-identify. If Jews are white, what obligation do we have to acknowledge such privilege and take redemptive actions? But the question remains, are Jews white? So listen to how Mr. Goldstein re responds. He says, there's really no conclusion except that it's complicated. <laughs> oh my gosh, you all. <laughs> we know history proves that so-called African Americans have suffered greatly as a people. We have the records to show the proof. But yet we have another group of people claiming to be our brethren, <laughs> saying that they had the same experience. Show me the proof. I want to see the proof. So we're going to dig deeper next time. And thankfully, we know that we have a Messiah, and he lives. So there is hope for us. Yes, salvation is for whosoever will receive him as Savior. 
And we're thankful that the Most High has made a, a way of escape for whosoever will receive his son and accept him as Messiah. But in the next session, we're going to focus on one of the other reasons we listed for how the skin turned white, the mating of humans with Neanderthals. Is it possible that Esau mixed his seed with Neanderthals? Hmm. After what we just read, you don't want to miss that session. Be sure to share the message and hit the subscribe button to get an update on the next upload. Shalom.